This video explains what the diagonals of a quadrilateral are and the appropriate information that you need to know about them. So these are all quadrilaterals. Some of them have got special names. That's a rhombus. In fact, I'm going to write the names next to them. It's a rhombus there. This one here is a parallelogram. Then we've got the rectangle. We've got the kite. We've got the square. And we've got two trapeziums down here. Both of these are. This one's an isosceles one. And finally, this one is an irregular quadrilateral. Let's see, we've got two kites. Let's put them together. Okay, so those are the names. You should refer to them, you should consider them all. Now, to get a diagonal of a quadrilateral, you just join opposite vertices or points. So this one has two diagonals. So does this one. So does this one. And in fact, you probably see this coming. All of these quadrilaterals have two diagonals. Now, don't be confused. Just because we call it a diagonal doesn't mean that it's a slanty line. It can go in any direction it likes, as long as it goes from one corner or vertex to the opposite one. And there's always an opposite one because they're quadrilaterals. They've only got four corners, four vertices. So you can't possibly do it to anything. You either do it for one next to it, in which case it's not diagonal it's a side or you do it to the opposite one in which case it's a diagonal and it doesn't matter which way round they are or what you do with them they're always crossing there so those are the diagonals and if you don't know what the diagonals are hopefully do now whichever way round it is that's what they look like now the diagonals have got some properties so for some of these shapes you can see the diagonals cross at right angles. So if I just get rid of my writing, I'm just going to put some of those out. Now, there's a right angle there. It's not a right angle there or there. There's right angles for these shapes. You can see where the, where the, the two things cross. There's a right angle. I'm just going to mark some of those on. There's one there. There's another one there. You can see it spots right angles, this program does. There we go. This one has right angles. So those are the ones that have right angles between the two diagonals, and these ones don't. So that's the first thing of interest. Some of them do, some of them don't. Now there are other things that are interesting. Some of them, the, some of these shapes, the diagonals split each other in half. Now, hopefully you can see that this bit and this bit are the same length, and this bit and this bit. So this one splits its diagonals in half. So does that one. These two don't. This diagonal has been split in half, it's true, but the vertical diagonal hasn't been split in half. How do I know? Because the top bit's smaller than the bottom bit. This one here, they don't cross at right angles, but you can see that the diagonals have been chopped in half, the rectangle. Same for the parallelogram. That bit and that bit are the same length, and so are that bit and that bit. So the diagonals chop each other in half. Not for this one, though. Why not? That bit there is shorter than that bit. It's not been chopped in half. Or that one. Or that one. So, there you have, quickly, in slightly under five minutes, some information about the diagonals. What diagonals are? There are those lines there that go from opposite vertex to opposite vertex. And what properties can the diagonals have? Sometimes diagonals cross at right angles. There's some shapes that's true of, and other shapes it's not. And some shapes where the diagonals cut each other in half, otherwise known as bisect, and it's true for some shapes, but not of others. That is information you should have. I hope it was useful.